Next speaker is Pramsha Shushant Rathagupto. Pramsha Rathagupto is an energy physicist. He was born in 1947 and graduated from Kolkata Calcutta University and also was graduated from here. Later, he did his PhD in the US and he joined uh, many, he actually served for the many universities uh, in India and abroad, starting from the Presidency College, Kolkata, then Jawaharlal University, Hyderabad University, and sometimes he worked for the Department of Electromedical Energy in Kalpatta. And he has uh, also experience in work abroad uh, in Brooklyn National Laboratory. And he also served as a director of the SN Bose National Science Center Kolkata and the founder director of II Asia Kolkata. And he also served as a vice chancellor of the Vishwa Bharati. Uh, now he is attached uh, with NIT Durgapur as INSA senior scientist and he is engaged in teaching and research mainly with the physics department but also engaged with the other department in different activity. May I request uh, Sir Prasadar to, to have this to this presentation. Do 
look at science and who is a scientist. If I ask myself, the physicists, we came through years of systematic training in schools, colleges, and universities. First, it was Newtonian mechanics and electromagnetism, and as we graduated to colleges and universities, we are exposed to quantum mechanics, relativity, thermodynamics, statistical mechanics, and so on. Following that, we had our advanced courses in quantum field theory, nuclear and condensed matter physics, etc. The employed tool was mathematics, firmly proven in logic. Furthermore, we carried out laboratory experiments to validate these topics. But apart from the foundational issues, we learned that it is equally significant to apply our acquired knowledge to materials and biological sciences, leading up to technology and medicines. It's important to clarify at the outset that Rabindranath Tagore did not possess any such liberal training in science. As a matter of fact, he didn't even have formal schooling. But he is in sync with us, trained physicists, is in the realm of observation. But that is not true. Laboratory instruments such as telescopes, microscopes, and spectroscopes, but the sensory organs, when it came to take off. Rovina was a very keen student of nature all his life. In fact, the schools he established in Shanti Nikitan and Sri Nikitan were set up in the midst of nature. When to open air classes, the students were exposed to rudimentary knowledge of science such as ecology, entomology, photosynthesis, animal behavior, and what we call basic environmental sciences. We saw examples of this in the lecture of Dr. Martin Kenchen. Now I'll show you pictures of open air classes in Patubhavana and excursions of Shikha students. And it is the understanding of natural phenomena which is one of the principal aims of us scientists too. Without formal knowledge of physics, Tagore had raised certain deep issues on reality, measurements with Einstein during their five meetings. In 1926 and 1930, as we heard this morning from Dr. Picasso. In the preface to the famous physicist Katananath Bose in Bishop Joy, that they were authored between 1934 and 1937, he wrote, and I translate, it is essential for those who have begun learning to enter at least the portals of science, if not its power. There is nothing demeaning in taking the support of literature to facilitate this preparatory introduction to science. That is why I have taken this responsibility myself. I have not been a devoted scholar of science, but from my childhood I had this endless desire to taste the nectar of science. I was about 12 when I traveled with my father to the Dalhousie Hills. After a day's hard journey of the hills, we would come back to the dark bungalow in the evening and settle down on a divan in the courtyard. As we sat and watched, the stars seemed to descend around us in the translucent darkness of the deep blue sky fenced in by the more hills. Father would identify the stars and planets for me and not merely identify them for he would also tell me the distance of their orbits from the sun, how long it would take for a complete revolution and a lot of other relevant details. Spans the actual text with a suggestion of the limits of human vision. The sun has cast a drippery on 
light around the earth, shutting us from a view of whatever exists beyond the earth. When the day ends, the sun sets, the drapery of light is lifted, and it is only then that innumerable stars stare the mantle of darkness. Then only we realize that the boundaries of the universe extend far beyond the earth, but we cannot conceive how far it reaches. Among the stars in the middle of the night sky, one finds patches of light clustered around the stars called the Milky Way. Powerful telescopes have revealed that the Milky Way comprises billions of stars. There is really nothing called darkness. Those that are invisible also possess light. There is incessant emanation of radiation of different colors, even from the dark ends of the universe. Though a far distance away, stars make their presence felt through light, some visible, some, however, invisible to the naked eye. Incidentally, as was mentioned by Gitaksh, Tagore's first publication as a teenager was on science, a piece on astronomy that appeared in the Bengali magazine of Kudodini. At one point in Vishnu Purichoy, Tagore comes to the question of the mode of travel of light. He finds the answer fascinating. Light travels as waves. It is difficult to fathom the nature of this wave. But soon, as it to perplex the human mind further, another body of data supported by firm evidence offered a contrasting view of light as consisting of innumerable corpuscles of tiny particles in a state of constant shower of very minute objects. These minute objects, as is well known to this audience, are called bosons after the name of S and Bose. Referring to waves and particles, Tagore raises the questions, how does one reconcile these two apparently contradictory views of light? What is more mind-boggling is that while the external manifestation of light is either as a wave or as a particle, what appears in the micro world is neither this nor that. We call it radiation. When it comes to low emotion, it, it is fair to say that in each and every component of Tagore's creative forays, in literature, philosophy, politics, spiritualism, universalism, songs occupy a central and pivotal position. These are the uh, photos of the festivals in Shantiri Gatan, which are now to data. He explores every marvel of creation through songs. Gane bhetor diye jagol dekhi Uvan khani Takhun tare chini Ami takhun tare jani Or, tumi kamon kore gaan karo he guni here is a translation of the song from the Gitan Yogin Song of Friends. I know not how thou singest my master. If I ever listen to thee, silent and then
Thou hast made my heart captive in the endless meshes of thy using, my master. The poet's cosmic thoughts are all embedded in Govindas. In the famous discourses with Albert Einstein, Tagore raised issues of mind perception and human bonding with the Creator through observations. There are numerous songs in which this bonding is eloquently expressed, such as Tai Toma Anand Amarpa Tumi Tai Eshe Chodi and it's also in the context of multiple choices of paths that an electron can traverse, such as in the double slit experiment on diffraction, it will translate it to music when it towards Einstein. There is human in human affairs an element of elasticity. Also, some freedom. within a small range, which is for the expression of our personality. It's like the musical system in India, which is not so rigid prefixed as Western music. Our composers give a certain definite outline, a system of melody and rhythmic arrangement, and within a certain limit, the player can improvise upon it. He must be one with a law of that particular melody, and then he can give spontaneous expression to his musical feeling within the prescribed regulation. We praise the composer for his genius in creating a foundation along with a superstructure of melodies, but we expect from the player his own skill in the creation of variations of melody flourish and ornamentation. In creation, we follow the central law of existence, but if we do not cut ourselves adrift from it, we can have sufficient freedom within the limits of our personality for the fullest self-expression. Einstein responded, that is possible only when there is a strong artistic tradition in music to guide the people's mind. In Europe, music has come too far away from popular art and popular feeling and has become something like a secret art with conventions and traditions of its own to go. You have to be absolutely obedient to this too complicated music. In India, on the other hand, the measure of the singer's freedom is in his own creative personality. He can sing the composer's song as his own if he has the power of creativity to assert himself in his interpretation of the general law of the melody. Einstein, oh, it requires a very high standard of art to realize fully the great idea and the original music so that one can make variations of it. In our country, the variations are often prescribed. Tagore, if in our conduct we can follow the law of goodness, we can have real liberty of self-expression. The principle of conduct is there, but the character which makes it true and individual is our own creation. In our music, there's a duality of freedom and prescribed order. Einstein was bemused. He asked, are the words of a song also free? I mean to say, is a singer at liberty to add his own words to the song he is singing? With a grin, they go responded, Yes, in Bengal, we have a kind of song. We call it Kirtan, which gives freedom to the singer to introduce parenthetical comments, phrases that are not in the original song, Akhor. This occasions great enthusiasm since the audience is constantly thrilled by some beautiful, spontaneous sentiment added by the singer. They go further to find that in contrast to Western music, melody and harmony are like lines and colors in pictures. A simple linear picture may be completely beautiful. The introduction of color may make it vague and insignificant. In color, may in combination with lines, create great pictures so long as it does not smother and destroy their value. Einstein, oh, it's a beautiful comparison. The line is much older than color. It seems that your melody is much richer in structure than ours. Japanese music also seems to be so. Oh, 
On the topic of soil science, these are also parts of the Greek curriculum and Washington bookshop. Uh, on the topic of soil science, the first song that comes to mind is a very deep one, which is a remarkable exposition on the rain cycle. Mati buke maje bondi de jal mili thake mati maina. In comparison to putting about the one that I am singing, and here is a translation by my friend Jayan Kripali. Of water, of water there is no gun, water that is trapped so deep on the earth, water that can't be tapped, won't seep up to the soil, water that stays in turmoil, and it skips up into the sky, becomes a shadow of your mind. Out of my shadows, ready to drop. And then, and when, this expect it again. Lightning strikes, and clouds that are full come cascading down. They come cascading down right to the ground. Abundant tears of happiness rain. The joy that rains over our hearts, and as the rains rain over the earth. Once again the rain, the rain comes again and again. Shatters in the 
mud spread from the three point on in and blackness without measure. The heavens river has drowned its banks and the flood of joy is a problem. In the words, Nathya, Nathya, why am I from it? Robin and Nathya explains that life is like a wave that comes around within one's soul. Yet the same life wave induces thousands of butterflies to unfold on their wings and triggers lightning powers such as lilies and gasoline. At the heart of triggering of lightning powers is of course a phenomenon of photosynthesis that hinges on the particle nature of light in causing electron transfer reactions in chlorophyll molecules. Thus in this song, we have a glimpse of Einstein's own work on the photoelectric effect that firmly established the quantization of light at which earned him the Nobel Prize in 1921. In the preparatory remarks, we have already alluded how Kittor explained the wave particle duality of light. We have raised that discussion once again here. Light travels as waves. It is difficult to fathom the nature of this wave. But soon, as if to perplex the human mind further, another body of data supported by thorough evidence offered a contrasting view of light as consisting of innumerable corpuscles or tiny particles in a state of constant shower of very minor objects. How does one reconcile this apparently contradictory views of light, Tibor asks. What is more mind-boggling is that when the external manifestation of light is either as a wave or as a particle, what appears in the micro world is neither this nor that. We call it radiation. I now mention. <laughs> Here the poet Lyricist looks with awe at the seamless expanding universe constituted of atoms and molecules cloaked by radiation. And then, The Big Bang the absolute beginning of the universe when loads of energy was released, brightly illuminating the sky. Next we come to discuss a very profound song, also played by our friend Vikas Sena, Akash Vara Shujyadara. This song epitomizes Tagore's unflinching interest in astronomy and gravitation, which was kindled in his mind when he traveled with Dalhousie Hills with his father at the age of 12, as has been already mentioned. The clear evening sky, laden with twinkling stars in the background of the setting sun left an indelible impression on the child's mind. Oshim tale jihil dole, juar matai bhuvan dole. The same gravitational pull between the earth and the moon that causes tidal waves is also responsible for blood flow in our veins. Here is a translation of the song by Shahana, which means of unwisely distinct from the original translation. The abundant cosmic skies, the sun and stars and galaxies, the light passing universe, at whose heart to all surprise, what do I find beating? But the very locus of my being. So, in awestruck wonder, my song swings to sound beyond her. In the limitless field of eternity, rises an appearance of duality. And so, in tidal air and flow, the bliss creation swings high and low. The power and pull of this reigns given over the blood in my veins. And so, in awestruck wonder, my song swings to sound beyond her.
mighty power strengthens the mighty wealth of the gods. Scattered abundantly all around, this inevitable bliss abounds. So, the lost that wonder, my song swings to sound. Here, dance is a euphemism 
আমার ওয়েবিং মোশন উইথ ওয়ার্ডস নিত্য তোমার মুক্তির রূপ নিত্য তোমার মায়া বিশ্ব তন্তে অন্তে অন্তে কাপে নিত্য ছায়া উই ডিসার্ন এন্ড উপনিষদ ইন মেসেজ এন্ড এট দ্য সেম টাইম দ্য কোয়ান্টাম মেকানিক্যাল প্রিন্সিপাল অফ ওয়েভ পার্টিকেল ডায়ালেক্টিক এ মলিকিউল দ্যাট ইজ অন লুপ the particle constituent of matter that is vishwakoru vibrates in the shadow of nataraja's cosmic dance nitte vashe sundar holo vidrohi paramanu the otherwise rebellious atom the paramanu gets localized another property of waves the underpinning of the uncertainty principle of quantum mechanics in vishwakoru chai the poet has written This is a scientific thought that when the world of objects are reduced to a stage when they cannot be subdivided, we reach the atomic world. Atoms are so minute that ten crores of them make a line of one inch. Physicists have now found ways of even breaking open the seemingly impregnable doors of atoms. When the latter are ripped apart, we obtain subatoms, then electrons and protons. But what constrains these electrons within the vast empty space of atoms is a mass concentrated at the atomic center, the nucleus. Otherwise, the atoms would not have existed. Neither would the world we live in. We now know, Pigott continues, that the elliptical path the electron follows it is not just one but multiple. These orbits are at definite distances from the nucleus. The electron cannot come closer to the nucleus from the nearest orbit from the nucleus. It can, however, transit from one orbit to another, apparently without any predetermined reason. The electron can absorb radiation to jump from an inner orbit to an outer orbit, just as it can emanate radiation when it jumps from an outer to an inner orbit. It is this emitted radiation that we call light. As long as the electron is constrained to move in the same orbit, there is no emission of light. This theory is one of the basic principles of quantum mechanics that explains why an atom retains its structure, why the universe remains intact. Nitya Vashe Sundar Holo Vidrohi Parmanu. Rabindranath goes on to write in Vishnu Purichai the fact that an atom is disintegrable has prompted physicists to devise machines that can penetrate inside the atom. These machines send radiation deep inside the atom to probe its internal structure. The Large Hadron Collider in the Sun is indeed a worthy successor to the machines that Tagore had alluded to.
Thank mm-hmm. you.